the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This past week, the uh, Chancellor of Germany visited the White House, Angela Merkel. That was interesting, I never knew about her. She'd grown up in East Germany. Her father was a Lutheran pastor, but East Germany was communist. So she doesn't really speak English all that well, but she's fluent in Russian. And she acts, with her 12 years of experience, as a great world leader, as a bridge between East and West. But speaking languages is very important, and the nuance is what gets us through difficult points in our conversation. Living with someone who has English as a second language often makes for certainly comical experiences. As I say, when Father Carlos comes out with something, I'll say, well, don't say that in public. Why not? I said, because they'll slap you. I won't, I won't say that. We have to learn how to speak the language of God. You've just heard the deacon and the lector proclaim God's word. But we come at God with a personality, with our own language. You're unique, precious, and irrepeatable, but you have to learn how it is that, that you would hear the voice of God. There's basically four ways to pray, so I'd ask you to see which category, which way of prayer fits your personality. We're all taught certain things. Uh, perhaps your grandmother or your grandfather taught you how to pray. They say, well, this is the way we pray. But if it doesn't do anything for you, or it's a foreign language to you, then yes, you're still a good grandchild, but not necessarily uh, one with any fluency in the language of the Lord. So perhaps you have to adapt your prayer life. One way of praying. We do this in the season of Lent, sometimes in Advent. Fasting, charitable giving, and discipline. This is kind of like a drill sergeant approach to prayer that you can stop by a convenience store and say, I'm going in for milk, and you come out with cigarettes, scratch tickets, candy bars, potato chips. No, I can't do this. I have to be in control of my emotions and my appetites instead of them controlling me. That's a way of prayer, of knowing not just your weaknesses, but your strengths. When I place myself in this place, it's prayerful. I need to stop at church, or I need to sit in this area of my house, or I need this view of the backyard. What's conducive to your prayer? And you seek it out and you go to it. Lots of people have gym memberships, but if you don't go, it doesn't do anything for you. You can brag about it. Oh yeah, I go to LA Fitness all the time. Years ago I've been there. You know, no, it's not working. Another way to pray, the mystical way of praying. This is kind of, uh, Hollywood's favorite version of prayer. It's always vision and bright lights and lots of smoke, but it's not like that. It's stillness and intensity. It's a profound appreciation. It's sitting with the sacred text and letting it speak to you. We can always read into the text what we see and then run after people and say, see, it says this, I'm right and you're wrong. That's not mystical prayer, that's selfishness, that's self-centeredness that's manipulating God's word for your purposes. But God's word is a loving embrace of you. Does the word embrace you? It has to be part of your personality. You can be obtuse and oblivious. I can stand and listen to the gospel. Every time the deacon proclaims the gospel, I hear something different. But it took a long time. For years, I would sit through the liturgy of the word, and if someone asked me, what was that reading just about? What, what, no, I was paying attention, really I was. And I wasn't, Bolivius. Mm. It's a discipline to pay attention to it. But it's a mystic if it grabs you and holds your attention and it, you let the text take you. The third way of prayer is the most popular in all parishes in the United States because it keys into our culture, spiritual value in our work. We're participating in the work of the Creator. When we have special projects, social justice projects, things like that, loads of people show up and they, they love it. It's a good uh, do-gooder thing. It's dropping off stuff for St. Vincent de Paul. It's having a food drive. It's all those things that you're enacting scripture. Finding God in all the things that you do. Being involved. Because in the end, scripture is not so much just to be read, it's to be performed. 
So you can ask yourself, if this is the way you pray, how will I perform the scriptures I've just heard? And finally, there's what I call <clears throat> the annoying spirituality. It's the prophetic and critical. It's the people that say, this is all wrong, we have to change this. There has to be social justice, it, otherwise it's just cheap grace. If you're a parent, you exercise the role of a prophet to your child. Listen here, young man, hold on, missy. And even when you're an adult child, you don't want to hear those words because it's cutting. It goes right through and you feel like you're 10 again. But your children are also prophets. They say, but dad, but mom, the Bible says this, but you do that. You don't want to hear that because it cuts through to your heart too. So what are you? Are you kind of that disciplined person? This is the way to do it. <clears throat> you take away things that are distraction and you stand before the divine. Are you mystic? Are you the one that the text grabs you and you're able to, the Lord, take you in the spirit? Are you active, practical? You have to get things done. You look for God in all things and you stop and say, isn't that something? That's the hand of God. Isn't that amazing how those things happen? I always say the Holy Spirit has excellent timing. Krishna last week, I preached about the symbols on the ceiling. He said, you know, I was sitting there. I've gone to this church for almost 40 years, I think 40 years, and I've always wondering, what were those symbols? And you spoke about it, and I thought, whoa. That's kind of mystical, active, practical. And finally, are you the prophet? Are you the one that points out everything that's wrong? Uh, a prophet had stopped me the other day and turned to me, I was waiting, Mark Serrato was talking, and, uh, and finally she turns and she says, you know, you really need to put lines in the parking lot because the parking is terrible. And I said, and you are, because I was taken aback. I said, I'll get right out there and do that. I don't have my paint with me, but we don't like prophets. Look in the scripture, all the prophets, they kill them all. I don't blame them. <laughs> It's annoying where someone will say, you know what's wrong with you? No, what's wrong with me? Although after 20 years of ministry, I have very thick skin. And I always feel badly for poor Father Carlos. He comes and goes, and then this happened? They said that, and, I, and he's just completely despondent. I said, oh, come on, kid, toughen up. That's nothing. All right, I think I'll have a coffee. <laughs> he's a good guy. Why do I ask you about these four types of praying? Because if you don't discover the way to pray, the path to sainthood is very difficult.